Hi everyone, this is Fen Lee, designer here at the Beach Floor Studio. Today's project is a reboot of a project that I shared back in February of 2016 um, for this fantasy flower hairpin and also brooch pin. Now, when I moved my website to a new payment system, I did not include the kit for this project because I did not have the written instructions yet and I just never got around to it. Uh, but not too long ago, um, someone went to uh, my website, uh, to the back of my website, where I initially wrote the blog post for this project and found the kit that was offered for sale and purchased it. And um, so I decided to go ahead and make a new video and also um, change the pattern of it so that it would be easier for beginners. You can download the um, PDF and also purchase the kit at my website at beadflora.com. For today's project, we will be using size 11 seed beads in um, silver lined rainbow silver and silver lined um, lime green, 22 gauge copper core wire in silver, and also a hair clip finding. For tools, we will need wire cutters, chain nose or needle nose pliers. Um, I normally use my chain nose, but I have no idea what it, where it is, um, so I'll be using my needle nose. And also, I'll be using hot glue for this project. Additionally, the tool that I'll be using to string the beads on wire is called a bead spinner. If you don't have a bead spinner, I will show you another method um, later on in the video on how to string the beads onto a wire using the scooping method. This is the kit that I put together for this project. Let's open this up here. It comes in this cute little craft gift box, so you can definitely reuse it after you've um, finished your brooch and use it um, for your finished bucket. So it comes with the all the wire that you need, the 22 gauge wire, for the petals and the center and the lacing wire in case you want to lace the hair component it is a hair brooch i mean hair pin and a brooch pin so it's definitely versatile use it as a hair clip or use it as a brooch i also included enough beads um, so um, that you can practice if you would like to. So there's definitely enough, uh, there's definitely extra beads in here. So if you would like to practice, you can definitely do that before you want to um, make the actual flower. This is a relatively inexpensive kit compared with the rest of my kits. Um, so if you like this video and would like um, more videos like this in the future, um, definitely please purchase a kit um, so that I can offer more free projects in the future. And you can find this at my website at beadflora.com. And now I have some green beads strung onto the uh, spool of wire. Um, if you want to be um, precise and cut your wire, that is um, 25 inches of cut wire. But I'm just going to work from the spool. Um, and again, I'm using 22 gauge silver wire um, for um, this component, which is the center that we're making. Um, you can also use um, 24 gauge wire. I like to use 22 for um, hair accessories or any type of accessory um, a lot of the time um, because it is a lot stronger. So to start out with, I'm going to leave a tail about three inches or so, two and a half to three inches. And then I'm going to count out 15 beads, nope, 20 beads. So it's going to be a 20 bead loop. So we'll take the 20 beads, make a loop across the wires, and then twist the loop. And now you have one 
20 bead loop. And then we're going to make another loop right next to the first one. So 20, another 20 bead loop. going until I have 10 of these. Now that I have 10 of these loops done, I'm going to cut off another tail of the spool. So now, so now I have 10 20 bead continuous loops. So just cross the two ending tail wires together. Just gonna smush. Yes, that's a technical term. <laughs> smush <laughs> all this together. And to start out with, I have 74 inches of the 22 gauge silver wire, silver wire already cut. I'm going to make a little loop at one end so that beads don't fall off. Okay, let's go to the other end. Okay, so I'm going to dump the silver beads in here. Turn on a whole bunch of these silver beads. How much? I don't know yet. Probably have about three or four inches or so. I'm gonna make a knot at this end too. Okay. I don't want to have a knot as well as a loop um, because I don't want to have the beads to fall off. Alright, so I'm gonna leave about a three inch tail on this end. It doesn't even have to be three, maybe about two and a half. Just something at the end. So about two and a half, three inches. And then hold on um, to the um, the three inch mark with your left hand, um, if you are right handed. And then I'm going to count 15 beads. And make a loop across the two wires. What I like to do is put my um, the the cross over my forefinger, index finger, um, just so that it helps stabilize the loop. And then twist twice. And take this is this long wire now is the working wire, and then you have this little tail wire. Um, so what you want to do is you take this working wire and you position this to the left hand side because as I am um, right handed I want to grab from left to right. If you are left handed you want to stay um, on the right hand side and wrap from right to left. Since I am right handed I move the working wire to the left and wrapping from left to right. And I'm going to move all of these beads that I strung on and take this and wrap it around the initial loop that remained. You notice that I've turned my work 
all the way around counterclockwise because you always want to wrap from the top. So let's straighten out this top wire or this tail wire over here because you want to wrap it when it's straight. Just a goofy thing. Okay, so put the loops over your finger and put your thumb over it so that you can steady the whole thing. Now, take this, the working wire, go behind the tail wire and back to the front like this. Now feed more beads on and wrap it around. I need to string on more silver beads. So undo this loop over here. Okay, pull your handy dandy bead spinner back. Turn some beads on. Also, if you don't have a bead spinner, let me show you real quick. You can use the scooping method. Do this. It's not as fast as the bead spinner, but it'll work. But you want a bead spinner. Again, so after we wrapped all of the beads around the loops, go behind it and back to the front. Okay, so I'm going to count 10 beads and remove the excess. I'm going to go to the green next. To switch beads, I'm just going to dump the silver and put the green on. I'm just going to string on enough green. Um, another 10 silver beads so that this right here lines up with right here. Okay. Now let's go back to the silver. You know what? Just do this because we're going back to the green right away. So I go back and forth for like 10 easy beads, right? Okay. So it's about 10 beads. Let me see how many. So 5, 10, about. Oh. About 11 beads. Because we're not counting the beads actually, we just want enough so that it wraps around. So now go behind, back to the front. Okay, back to the green. We are not done. More green. On the green. Final row is all green. And we'll have the beads 
flying everywhere. Okay, you know what? That is okay. So again, I'm going to take this working wire, go behind the tail wire, back to the front like this, and once more, back to the right. So that the working wire is on the right hand side, because I am right handed. Working from left to right, if you are right handed. And right over here, just make sure that it is tight. If it is not, you want to wrap it around one more time. That's cool too. That's the beauty of wire. Okay. Okay, so now we have this really long wire. We're going to make um, another petal right next to this one. So let's go ahead and string on more silver beads. So last time we strung on about three inches or so, and we needed a bit more. Maybe three and a half, maybe four. Four is definitely better than less. Okay, stop here. If we need more beads, we'll put some on. Not again. So right here, let's leave about, we want to measure out the length from here to here, and that is the length you want to leave in between the um, first and the second petal. Grab a ruler here. Okay, so right here, the twisted wire is half an inch. So you want to leave half an inch in between the first and the second petal. So you, you have enough room to wrap. So let me show you here. Straighten out the wire. So half an inch, mark this here. You mark it with your left hand. Now we're going to count out 15 beads, 5, 10, 15, make the initial loop, twist. Alright, so because, like I said, I am right-handed, so I'm going to take this working wire and move it to the left.
And with this tail wire, get it out of the way. Do not wrap it around this. Um, one of the most common mistakes that I see um, is people like to involve the tail wire um, somewhere. So leave it alone. Get it out of the way. Just about three times. Hmm. Okay, so one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, that, that looks about right. <laughs> okay, so what do you know? I'm just missing one bead. So we um, wrapped it around um, three times and fourth wrap around. I need 10 beads. I just need one bead. Let's just grab it from the table here. So before we go on any further, I want to go over uh, what exactly I was doing. <laughs> um, we started with 15 beads. Um, for the initial loop, so that's uh, that was a 15 beat loop, and so there are five total loops total. Um, so it's a 15 bead quintuple wrap around loop. That means we just, we just because we're just wrapping around the loops, so it's a wrap around loop. Continuous wrap around loop is the technique. So 15 bead quintuple continuous Wrap around loop. All right. Okay. Now let's going with let's get going um, with the second pedal. So um, we have three wrap around loops so far, and then um, ten beads, ten silver beads, and now we're gonna string on the three. Get rid of the silver. Moving the excess green beads. So I just want it so that it mirrors. Uh, the left mirrors the right. The right mirrors the left. Okay, put some silver on here. About 11 or so. It can vary um, depending on how you wrap. Beauty of uh, French beads. We don't get the exact bead count uh, because it's depending on the size of the beads. So your beads could be bigger or smaller. Um, so we have more or less beads. So, but we're not really counting. We're just um, wrapping it so that there are just enough beads to go around the initial loop. Wrapping it around. Okay. For the last wrap around loop, we're doing all green. That's enough. Okay, one more piece. All right, okay, let's grab this one here. Okay.
behind, back to the front, and then back again to the right hand side. So now there are two petals. And then we're going to just keep doing um, what we did with um, starting with the second petal and just make the third petal. Leave a half inch in between, right? And um, make the petal. Again. And just keep going until there are five petals. Now this next part that I will be showing you is optional and um, you don't necessarily have to do it if you don't want to uh, because it is not a um, favorite part <laughs> of anyone's. Um, a lot of the times I advise it, but for this project it is optional. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to do it. It is called lacing and lacing is basically sewing all of the rows together. And for this, I will be using 30 gauge wire. Um, this is the wire that I have, 30 gauge wire. Um, and this is also copper core wire. And um, for this part, you can use, um, you can go as thin as 34 gauge and um, 32 or 30 and sometimes um, depending on the project, even 28, but I, I wouldn't go as far as 28, but 34 to 30 um, would be good gauges of wire to use for lacing. So I'm going to take about 10 to 12 inches of the wire, the lacing wire, and place it over along the bottom here, closer to the bottom because I want to lace all of the bottom petals together. Okay, so you see the the top of the, the wire here. Um, just lace it along right there. So I'm just going to place it right along here. Just hold on to the wire and then put the wire in between the first two rows. Bring it down and bring it back up. So now that you have uh, this wire wrapped around the first row. And because it is the first one, I'm going to do it twice just so that it is secure. Now take this wire and go between the second and the third row. One of the easiest ways, one of the tricks, is to turn your work around as you're doing it so that you can see where you are. Okay, so now take this wire and go between the first and the second row. And now you have created the first stitch. Now keep going between the next two rows and continue flipping as you're working. Now this is definitely one of the most one of the more tedious parts. It's not the most fun part of um, making beaded flowers. But it is absolutely necessary in a lot of cases if you want um, your rows to look neat. And because I used a thicker wire for this, um, you can get away with not lacing this project. 
but if you are using, say, 24 gauge wire, um, then you absolutely would need to lace. Now, where am I? So that's why it's important to flip it so you can see exactly where it is. And flipping it will get um, your rows, um, your stitches a lot neater and straight. And um, let me tell you this, it's okay if it is not completely straight. If you have one stitch that goes awry, um, don't worry about it. You won't see it because you're probably struggling to see where the wire is on here, right? Because it's, it's hard to see. So um, after you've um, finished making your flower, um, you're mostly seeing it from the front and you're not going to see the back. Plus, you'll be putting a hairpin um, right here too. I know some of you are perfectionists and want to have everything perfect. It's okay. It's not completely straight. Now I have my first petal all laced. There's two options. You can cut this here and, and lace each individual petal uh, on its own. Lace each individual petal. Or what I like to do is I like to lace everything together because it's one whole flower. Um, so if you want to cut it right now and tuck in the wires, you can do that right here and then continue with the second petal. Uh, but I'm going to continue lacing. I'm going to put the wire through the second petal. And with here, I'm kind of going down slanted a little bit. Camera to focus a little bit better. It's kind of, you can see, it's kind of slanted down a little bit because I don't want it right here. I want it to go down a little bit. Because I want it to be closer to the bottom. Now I have all the petals laced and um, I'm going to take this ending wire and connect them both together. If you left a little bit more wire, if you had a longer wire, then you wouldn't have to do this here. So I eyeballed just enough. So I'm going to take this wire here and it's going to Help me gra grab it. And connect the two wires together. I mean, the two petals together. Do it twice. Okay. Now that the all the petals are connected. Cut the ending wires. I know I had another one here. Tuck it in. Okay, move to the front somehow. Cut it off. 
tuck it in with your fingers or your tool. Now you can see that your petals are a lot neater. They won't get out of place. Now I am ready to assemble this flower, so take the center and insert it in the petals. And twist it here with your pliers. And right now I have some my hot glue gun going. Once that gets hot enough, I'm going to glue my finding on here. So it is a, a finding with a brooch and also a clip, so it can be a brooch or a hair clip. So twist it. And I'm going to bend this down. Wrap it around a tad, and then cut this here. grass I have here because I'm going to put glue on it because I don't want to keep my work surface all glued up. Okay, so just going to glue this right here. My glue gun over here. So dollop on some just around where the area is. And just put it on. it. And it, this will definitely last. If it comes off, put some more glue on it. Um, or you can use E6000, but I have not had a problem doing these types of projects with the hot glue.